traditionally they've always done houses and gardens and I've never been interested in that not that I don't uh, love my house but it's all about our garden and when we moved here we had an opportunity there was uh, only a few trees on the entire property and the rest was mud uh, it was they had big dogs and they had just destroyed this property so we were able to plant the entire thing um, ourselves. About 85% of the property is natives. And I wanna talk about that for just a second, and I'd love to talk further about this. But Doug Tallamy is the aficionado of uh, insects. He's an entomologist from um, the University of Delaware. And he has made the connection between insects, birds, and gardens. And <clears throat> if you don't have native plants, you're not going to have insects coming to those native plants because they don't recognize them as food. And if you don't have insects coming, you're not gonna have birds because birds need the insects to eat to feed their young. Uh, a chickadee raising its young, need, and a chickadee only feeds its young caterpillars. That's it. They don't feed them seed, they don't feed them anything else, caterpillars, because the keratin in a caterpillar is necessary for bone and feather growth. And a chickadee raising one nest uses between six and 9,000 caterpillars mm. to feed that, those fledglings, those, those chicks. And a chickadee only stays within maybe an acre of ground. ground. So you've got to have in your yard enough food for the, those birds. We've lost 50 million birds in the United States thus far over the last 30 years. And if we continue to lose birds, we're going to continue to have the problems with more invasive insects, uh, more problems. And most people go to Home Depot, they buy the six plants that are there, and they're all non-natives, and then they bring them home and plant them, and they go, there they go, and then they get diseased, and then they have to spray them, because guess what? The birds aren't eating those insects. So it's, it's just this vicious, vicious cycle that people have created, and the, the, the retailers have created two for us because, oh, isn't that a pretty plant? We don't have, first of all, we've never used any insecticide or any uh, herbicide in here to clean up everything. We just let the nature take its course and it balances out. Secondly, we also try to have native plants, about 85%, like I said. We don't plant annuals. What we have is a succession garden. So at any time there's something blooming or something interesting, but the whole yard isn't a blaze in color and glory uh, because that is just going to be, be very quickly decimated when you have the next phase. So you want a garden that, you know, right now, the cherry tree's in bloom. Right. Next week, here are the red buds coming in. Then following that, the dogwood, the service berries just coming into bloom, the blueberries, the viburnums, um, and then your ferns are going to be coming up, uh, Itea, Father Gilla, um, everything that's going to be just following in succession. In the fall, this is Ilex vomitoria. It turns a beautiful bronze color, so you've got beautiful bronze color. This Kentucky Yellowwood is going to bloom in May, and it's got beautiful mottled gray bark for during the uh, winter time. And then in the fall, it turns bright yellow, so you've got beautiful colors in. It's all planned. That's and that's what, as you were as you were talking about. It, I, I thought it, it isn't like you just you go into a you, you go into a, a Home Depot and just oh that looks nice. Let's let's get that. I mean you you've done some research. You've done some planning. Yeah, let's go take a look at an area over here that I want to show you. So I did all the rock walls in the in the uh, in the yard. Uh, <laughs> my mistake was I bought thirteen um, pallets of rock because I got a good deal. And the, the problem with rock is the big rocks are on the bottom in the pallets, and you have to put the big rocks at the bottom for the walls. So yeah. I had, to, I had to take everything apart and do it. But uh, it took me a little while to get the rocks done. And we did the pond because we hit uh, a spring under the rock. This plant right here is called Hypericum. It's a native. It gets about this tall. It never gets much taller than this. And it's coming out now. It turns brown. I just let it go and the leaves, the brown leaves will fall off and it'll green up. But what happens is underneath here, it's all shady. So you're not gonna have any weeds under there. I used to have hmm. brown, yeah. lower ground cover. Ground cover, you have to work all the time to get the weeds out because they get through. But when you have sh shrubs, 
The weeds can't get through and that's what you want to do. You want to think about how this plant is going to fill this area. It gets three by three. I put 12 of them in here. It fills it up. There you go, bingo bang. This area over here on the right, it looks totally empty. But uh, you can see that the, uh, the lilies, the, um, I'm sorry, the cone flowers, this, uh, the uh, black-eyed Susans, um, there's all kinds of flowers and plants that'll be coming up here. They're already starting up and that'll fill this area and be uh, filled with um, great plants for the, the birds. And then we leave the, the deadheads here all through the winter and the birds feed off of them. And I just cleaned this out about a week ago. So you've got, I just saw a bumblebee come by here. He's looking for something to eat. <laughs> We've already got um, the native honeysuckle on the vine over there and that's coming out already. And so we want to make sure that your bees are fed. You've got um, native uh, violets that are popping up that we let them and then they kind of fade in the, and people are like, well, we don't need any weed kind of things that are spreading. The idea is fill it up. Don't have empty spots. So right now I've got a couple empty spots that I'm going to fill up with some plants and make sure that I don't have just mulch beds because then I have to weed them. By June 15th, I don't do any work in this yard until maybe September, October. I, sh I was just thinking, I was just gonna say to you, I mean, this is all, this takes care of itself. It takes care of itself, right. So, and there's all kinds of little things that are gonna be popping up. Right here, we've got a little native iris that's coming up. There's plants in the pond that'll be popping up. Uh, those are um, lizard tails that are gonna be coming through uh, and just, uh, just a 50 cent herb that I bought at the farmer's market, been here for years. Um, and that's going to be coming back up and uh, filling this area here. So there's just um, all kinds of opportunity. You know, I look at some of the stuff I put in years ago, like that is not a native spirea. I want to replace it with a native spirea because I know that that's going to be more beneficial to the birds and, and to, the, to the insects in our yard. Uh, and then, of course, we have our compost bin. That we just, it's a pretty passive thing. Um, last fall, one of our neighbors got rid of about uh, 15, 20 big bags, paper bags of leaves. We threw them in there. They fit, they've composted, and by uh, early, early summer here now, we can take that compost yep. and we can spread it in the yard and that's just food for the, for the plants. And for the, for the person who's, who wants to find out about native plants, is there, is there a place, is there a, a resource that they can go to to find out about natives? There is. There's RappahannockNatives.org. Uh, uh, that was put together by the state, uh, different areas in the state, uh, came up with uh, ways to uh, incorporate more natives. Um, natives can be expensive, and it drives me crazy that it can be expensive. But don't be afraid to buy like small plants, one gallon plants online. Um, Colesville has quite a bit. Uh, and when you go to Meadow Farms, ask for the natives. When you go to uh, Lowe's and Home Depot, ask for the natives. We're going to be selling native trees and shrubs in the fall. Uh, we did just that giveaway that you were at last mm -hmm. weekend. That was $17,000 I had to get in grants to do that and we gave 2,300 plants away. This year, uh, starting in about a week, I'm going to put it out there. People can start ordering and buying native plants for delivery in October at $6 for a one gallon container. And that way they can buy as much as they want. And then we'll also have grants available for those who can't afford it. And I uh, have a drawing for those folks that uh, need to be it. And we'll, we'll make sure that they get at least a few plants and, and so on. What's, what's great about walking around your backyard is the fact that it's, it's focused and as passionate as you are have been about tree fredericksburg over the years you live it this is you, you know you you it's it's more than you do you do more than just I don't, take this I around just the, don't talk. you don't talk <laughs> it you 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 live it every day well the thing about it is is that we this all started with our love of bluebirds dead and i said well how are we going to feed these bluebirds and that's when i wanted to start putting berry bushes to feed them in the winter but when I watched Doug Tallamy's talk about a month ago, it just opened my eyes and gave me that connection that not only do we have to have food for the birds in the winter and we feed them with our seeds and we watch them, but we need to make sure that our plants 
are there for them to have insects that can come in. And, and I urge everybody to go to just uh, YouTube and look, uh, Google Doug Tallamy. Uh, he wrote the book Na uh, Nature's Best Hope. And it's uh, an eye opener. And you're wanting to save the planet one, this is a, a third of an acre, one third of an acre at a time. Mm. And my next door neighbor, um, they have just grass. And so there's no wildlife over there, unfortunately. We don't have to cut grass because we don't have any grass. <laughs> a bee just went by my head. So yeah, that you're, he's you're looking for food. He's, yeah. a, he's like working this whole yard. So tell me about this tree. Well, this tree we planted, uh, I think about 2006 is when this tree went in. It was um, just a, about a five feet tall. And now it's, I think we measured it the other day, it was 53 feet tall and it's a river birch. So they're fast growing. Um, but it's in a special place because it's right by the where the stream overflows. Mm -hmm. So when we get water from the garage, it goes into the pond and any leftover water flows out down the stream bed. And then that tree, of course, uh, sucks it up. What's real fun, and I never understood, I never saw this and I never understood it, but as the tree starts, uh, the phloem starts going up into the tree to feed the tree, it hits some of the spots where maybe a woodpecker is hit and it starts dripping a little bit. And the birds come and feed off of that phloem that's coming up from huh. the tree. Yeah. So it's got nutrients and it's got a little bit of sugar in it as well. But you can see we've got a squirrel under there, we've got doves, we've got, um, uh, so what, do we, what else do we have over there? Now there's, there's several different kinds of birds I see and the squirrel right. and I mean you know and every, everybody's coexisting so well right and you just you don't need to manage your yard as much as a lot of people um, weeding should not be a big deal so these flowers that are allowed here in our pathway are just allowed there's columbine uh, there's bleeding hearts uh, this is um, grape hyacinth that's just popped up um, things move around the yard and they go where they like it and I let them do that. Well, April 20th, this this is part of the of the tour. Absolutely. And it'll be, like you say, you've, you've got some things in bloom now, but there'll be different things in bloom then and it, it's, it's just ever changing here. Yeah, and people are welcome to come. Uh, we're going to have a bluebird talk. We're going to have people here answering questions about bluebirds. Um, we did the downtown pots with the, uh, the real big canna that are beautiful uh, leaves. And we took the uh, roots from those and I stored them and we'll be giving them away to the first 300 people that come through. Uh, they can give a donation to Main Street if they want, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna have folks uh, talking about native plants here. I'll have some handouts. And then I'm gonna open my garden throughout the summer so people can just, if the front gate is open, people can just walk on through and take a look and see what's going on that time of year because it changes on a constant basis. And I'll have some pictures available for people to see uh, the succession of how this, this garden looks. I also like the fact you've got your hose. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And if you, you, can, you can water things as needed and it's, it's, it's in a convenient place. Yeah, that's a, great, that's a great stand. And then the other thing we've got is we've got our bird bath and we have a drip in just a tiny bit because birds like to have, and Carl's hooked up on a, a feed from over here from the hose and then it comes to this copper pipe and it drips there. These are our blueberry bushes against the, the, the wall over here. And then there'll be uh, different shrubs here. These are winter berries, elderberries. Um, just things are all just coming up. I've, I'm, it's loaded right now with wild strawberries, but the birds love it and it's an early uh, uh, food for them. So I leave it and then I kind of clean it out a little bit and keep it under control. Thank you, Ann. Well, thanks, Ted. Thanks so much for coming by.